Celebrated Bay Area photographer Richard Nisrach was born in Los Angeles County in 1949, and he arrived at the University of California at Berkeley in 1967, from which he eventually emerged with a BA in psychology. Upon graduation, he turned to the ASUC Berkeley stu studio for photography instruction, which even to this day offers non-credit practical arts classes for everyone on the Berkeley campus. He lists his teachers, Paul Herzog, Roger Minnick, and Steve Fitch as the major influences in his early career. In the following presentation, we'll try to provide an overview of his dozen or so major projects and look at a few pictures, which for me, out of his nearly 50 year career, seem to exemplify them. The highly politicized environment in Berkeley in the 1960s was the background for constant anti-war riots and student demonstrations in favor of social justice for various minorities. And this became for Mizrock an enduring influence, lasting in one way or another throughout his career. It led him to his first public success, the award-winning paperback book Telegraph 3 AM, which depicted the lifestyle of homeless, apparently drug-dependent residents of Telegraph Avenue in 1974, the images in the book being reproduced from split-tone silver prints. This kind of gritty, no-holds-barred social photography bordering on the surreal was new at the time. Thematically, it is more questionable for us today, since in the intervening decades we have learned perhaps to be more respectful and sensitive to the situation of homeless persons. The book has never been reprinted, and used copies today sell for hundreds of dollars. After Telegraph 3 AM, Mizrock next turned to the operating techniques which in principle have defined his career ever since, large format color photographs, at first of natural American landscapes, devoid of persons or any record of cultural intervention, but later introducing graffiti and all kinds of artifacts into his pictures, which distinctly incorporate social justice and environmental concerns. It is worth remembering that earlier large format photography had been almost exclusively black and white, and for that reason Mizrach is now reckoned as a pioneer of large format color work that began in the 1970s together with other artists like Stephen Shore and Joel Meyerowitz. Desert Cantos has been described as Mizrach's opus magnum, which he began in 1979 with a Deerdorf 8x10 camera, and which has continued to this day in a series of different portfolios and published books, each describing a particular aspect or perspective involving man's relationship to nature. In an interview with the LA Times, Mizrock says that he chose the desert because it, quote, may serve better as the backdrop for the problematic relationship between man and the environment. The human struggle, the successes, both noble and foolish, are readily apparent in the desert. Symbols and relationships seem to arise that stand for the human condition itself. Consequently, the desert cantos begin in wilderness spaces, devoid of human interference, but in subsequent installments become littered with telephone poles, graffiti on rocks, passing trains in the distance, and they work their way then up to increasingly higher levels of cultural complexity, such as artificial desert seas, car races, fires and floods, nuclear testing sites, and even the landing of a space shuttle. Mizrock's political interests are evident in Desert Cantos 28, which features graffiti left from the 2016 election on rock walls and abandoned buildings in the Southern California desert and elsewhere. After the initial installments of the ongoing Desert Cantos, two projects followed which documented natural disasters. The firestorm which killed 25 persons and destroyed 3,000 homes in the Oakland-Berkeley Hills in 1991. 
After that, Misra traveled to New Orleans to photograph the devastation caused by Hurricane Katrina in 2005. The pictures appeared in print portfolios, book publications, and museum shows at the Oakland Museum, Berkeley Museum, and San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. On a commission from an art museum in Atlanta, Georgia, Richard Misroff began in 1998 to document an area on the Mississippi River called Cancer Alley near Baton Rouge, in which over a hundred oil plants and refineries are located. This project ended in 2012 with the publication of Petrochemical America, in which the photographs were provided extensive commentary by Columbia professor Kate Orff on the historical, socio-economic, and ecological issues embodied in the pictures. In a series called On the Beach, beachgoers swimming and playing on a beach in Hawaii, photographed from a ledge overhead, reminded Misrach of victims falling from the World Trade Center in 2001. Giant prints were made for gallery and museum shows, enhancing the photographer's constant questioning of man's existence within spaces otherwise given to nature. As in so many of his compositions, the central object is overwhelmed by the background, which in a reversal of roles becomes the dominant force in the picture. Signaling the end of the analog era in photography, Misrach embarked upon some extended experimentation with reverse images, that is, making prints of chromatic negatives. Highly regarded photographs taken in border areas between the United States and Mexico have occupied Misrach until the present, some of which have been published as the border cantos by Aperture in 2016. In a collaboration with composer Guillermo Galindo, he has photographed a variety of artifacts from the border zone, including shotgun shells, rubber tires, clothes, plastic bottles, even parts of the border wall, from which Galindo constructed sculptural objects that produce musical tones. Richard Misrock's career spans almost 50 years of dedication to the highest levels of art photography. And in the course of a few minutes, it's not been possible to do more than simply point at the primary projects he's been involved with and illustrate them with more than two or three examples out of an opus that at the least numbers many hundreds of photos. Nevertheless, I chose Misrock because he exemplifies at least two aspects which for me characterize the best of Bay Area photography. The first being his technical mastery of large format printmaking, making him in this respect the obvious successor to the F64 movement, which prevailed here in the 1920s, 30s, and 40s at the hands of master photographers Ansel Adams, Imogene Cunningham, Edward Weston, and others. Secondly, not only is Misrock's work as innovative as it is technically challenging, but it also constitutes a clear commitment to the kinds of progressive political ideals and environmental concerns which have long been so integral to Bay Area and Northern California cultural life. Given these priorities, Richard Misrock's work has no equal. <laughs>